Solgold has been listed on the AIM market of the London Stock Exchange since we started the company in early 2006 and since then the shareholder base has uh, grown very large. We believe that this large strong shareholder base will be a real benefit to Solgold in the future. Uh, it demonstrates to the market that uh, we have a, uh, a liquid capital base and it also means that uh, we have a great shareholder base uh, from which we will uh, derive financial support in the future. And it was a top-down search that the board commissioned in 2010 to go and look for something that was going to be world-class. We selected the uh, Andean copper belt, one of the most prolific and well-endowed copper gold belts in the world. We decided that Ecuador was the country we had to go to. It's what we call a yellow light country. It's going from unacceptable to highly acceptable, and that's the sort of space that Solgold really likes to hunt in. So currently in the project, we've completed all the, the hard groundwork, which includes stream sediment sampling, soil sampling, uh, which honed us in into this particular creek called Alpala, and they discovered sheeted porphyry veins there. And we bought in the drill rig in September 2013. We're up to hole 10 now. We've had some really encouraging results, some spectacular results. And we're looking for about a billion tonnes here. So we're looking for something globally significant. We've had uh, results like a thousand metres at over a percent copper equivalent, which would have to be in, in the, if you made a list of the top, say, 20 drill holes in history, I think we'd make that list. Everything from the environmental management to how the drill platforms are set up to how the drill core moves from the core down to here to the people movements. Everything seems to work like clockwork. We involve ourselves intimately with the community and that gives us a real competitive advantage when it comes to getting access to and getting some real meaningful work done on these projects. So we have the best team in the world we believe to prosecute a very successful program. We have people who are expert geologically, people who are expert from the point of view of government and community. The more holes we drill, the better we can get a hold on the geometry of this system. It's steeply dipping it, so we're chasing high grades in these holes. And between drill holes, you want to determine the geometry of what we're looking for. And so we create what we call geology models of the, the different intrusive faces that, that host this porphyry stockwork copper gold mineralisation. I guess you could call me a remote operations specialist. Cascabel's actually the, by far the least remote place I've ever worked. We're right off the main road. I've worked on a lot of porphyry systems around the world. But Cascabel's by far the best thing I've ever been associated with and I think it's a once in a lifetime project. It's got all the things we need, all the things we're looking for. It's got a giant footprint, it's got the right geophysics and most importantly it's got the grade. It's got a really high grade porphyry. We're just at the tip of the iceberg as well. There's anomalies all over it. You know, we've only drilled in Alpala Creek just because that was outcropping and who knows what's under there? Who knows how shallow we're going to find this mineralisation? The vertical ore column of over a kilometre of high grade is one of the deepest and richest porphyries I've even read about or, or, or heard of. So it's, yeah, I'm just really fortunate to be here. You can see the high silica content. It's full of quartz. These late sea veins would give us, give us an upgrade in the copper. And in the silica, like you can see here, that's where we think the, uh, there's a kick in the gold paragenesis there. So it's giving us super high grade gold and copper results. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a multi-phase multi system. And that's what you want in these things. Just multiple pulses continually upgrading your metals. We've got some really accomplished geologists working with us. We've got Steve Garwin consulting on this. You don't often get a chance to work with guys like that because good projects attract good geologists, you know. My name's Steve Garwin. I have about 25 years of experience with exploration and mining companies looking for gold and copper throughout uh, the Western Pacific and Southeast Asia. I have a PhD in economic geology. So we need to understand the geometry of these intrusions. We understand the geometry of those intrusions. That geometry is going to affect the geometry of the quartz veins that have all the copper and gold. I'm primarily a technical advisor or copper gold specialist helping the company explore for gold and copper at Apala where they're currently drilling and also in the Cascabel tenement area. The results thus far from drilling are very encouraging. This is a piece of recent drill core. All that yellow mineral is a copper sulfide mineral. Um, this core is most geologists dream of getting core like this. 
and they have hundreds of meters of core like this at this prospect. And the results thus far are very encouraging and compare favorably to deposits in Papua New Guinea and British Columbia, some of which are becoming mines. So I think the results there speak for itself. That in the general geological setting, uh, and this area is relatively underexplored, so I think there is good potential for discoveries like this in the existing tenement area. Uh, this looks good, and um, you're not drilling far from drill hole nine, which was amazing. And what did you quote? 1,200 meters at, at one percent copper equivalent, and that's a hard, hard, um, that's a, hard to beat. Yeah, well right. Obviously, the, the guys that set this project up, people like Jason Ward, they knew what they were doing and they got a great relationship with the local community. The community is pretty much part of the company and it's a, it's a massive cultural change when you have this approach to the community because if you sell the idea to the community that the company is a community himself, it's, it's so important for, for our company. 70% of the people that work in this project are part of the community and this is, this is the key. Me gusta mi trabajo porque me gusta ayudarles a los demás, les, me gusta servirles, compartir, y porque se pasa bien. Yo me llamo Susana Martínez, sembramos eh, plantas frutales, maderables, trabajo en el vivero comunitario de Enza. Estamos ahora en el vivero comunitario, vivero que se dedica a la producción de plantas agroforestales que son dedicadas y destinadas para las fincas de las comunidades que se encuentran dentro del área de influencia del proyecto. En el año anterior llegamos a una producción de 20.000 plantas, las cuales fueron entregadas en su totalidad a todas las comunidades que están dentro del área de influencia del I work very closely with the government, with the regulators, in the Ministry of Environment, in the Ministry of Mine, in all the level. Doing the right thing, be honest and be transparent with our activities is our future. This is so important all the time to do the right thing, be honest and be transparent in all the things that we do here in the country. One of the enjoyable and important aspects on working on a prospect like this is using the data that you collect. Here much of the data is collected from drilling. Uh, in this case, we can see the relationship of copper to a quartz vein. The copper has come in and reopened that quartz vein and deposited this yellow copper, copper sulfide mineral. The development of these quartz veins and these copper sulfides are related to a series of intrusions. Each of these intrusions, like granites and diorites, they have a char characteristic geometry. With, once we determine that geometry by drilling and from surface mapping where applicable, we have a better idea of where to put the next drill hole. So with each drill hole, we're always changing our understanding, improving understanding, getting smarter, uh, in, in the hopes that with each subsequent drill hole, we can drill longer intercepts of higher copper and gold grades. We're planning on um, doing some directional drilling, which we'll, we'll use a deep pilot hole to get through the 500 meters or so of volcanics that sit over the top of this thing. And um, then we can do, do many, a fan of holes off, off the main pilot hole, which will that'll enable us to, to deliver the results more qu quickly, have uh, a lot more pierce points and um, do most of our drilling in, in high grade mineralization. We're just barely beginning to understand the geometry and with so many holes that have hit success thus far, with an understanding that's not complete, it really bodes well as we get smarter and learn more for subsequent drilling that we may be able to find even higher grade intercepts than have been found thus far. Cascabel was originally selected as a low to medium grade porphyry copper project that we thought could yield something that might be as spectacular as Cobre Panama. Cobre Panama is the main asset of Inmet Mining recently taken over by First Quantum for about five billion. That gives you some idea of the economic rationale that we had behind looking for one of these monsters. We have found not only a very large low grade system but we found some very long intersections of very high grade mineralization and that is exciting us because in the context of the hilly topography around Cascabel we can envisage an underground mining development here which will have a very low environmental impact so the uh, project is really morphing its nature from a large low grade open cuttable porphyry copper gold project to a very high grade underground one. That's going to mean that we will spend less capital, get higher returns 
and therefore be much more attractive to financiers and the equity market.